Uh, hello everyone. This is the second section of the chapter confidence intervals for one population mean. That is confidence interval for one population mean when sigma is now. Uh, we know that one of the methods to obtain information on population mean is by confidence interval estimates from the previous section. Okay. So in this lesson, we are going to obtain confidence intervals for population mean when sigma is now. Okay. First of all, let's learn the procedure to calculate the confidence interval for mean mu. This is called one mean C interval procedure. Okay. One mean C interval procedure. There are three assumptions that we need to assume. Simple random sample, normal population or large sample, and sigma is now. The first one is simple random sample. And it is normal population or it's a large sample. And also the standard deviation sigma is also known. These are the three assumptions that we should consider when we are doing one mean C interval procedure. Okay, now let's learn the procedure step by step. At first, we need to find the C score of alpha over two for a confidence level one over one minus alpha. For this, we can use the C score tab. Okay, the step one is to Find the C score of alpha over 2 for confidence interval, confidence level 1 minus alpha, and use the C score table in order to get Z alpha over 2. And the second step is to um, the confidence interval for mu is from uh, x bar minus Z alpha over 2 sigma over square root of n to x bar plus c alpha over 2 sigma over square root of n where c alpha over 2 is found in step 1 n is the sample size and x bar is computed from sample data that is the point estimation that we talked in the previous section okay. finally we can interpret the confidence interval one important thing is that we can obtain exact confidence interval for normal population but only as an approximated confidence interval for large samples of the non-normal populations. Okay. All right. Um, let's move to the next section. When to use the one mean C interval procedure. For small samples, say, uh, of size less than 50, the C interval procedure should be used only when the variables under consideration is normally distributed or very close to being so. Okay. Um, for a sample size less than 15 or something, the C interval procedure should be used only when the variable under consideration is normally distributed or very close to being so. And for samples of moderate size, say between 15 and 30, the C interval procedure can be used unless the data contain outliers or the variables under consideration is far from being normally distributed. Okay. And finally, for large samples, let's say the sample size of 30 or more, the C interval procedure can be used essentially without restrictions. However, if outliers are present and their removal is not justified, you should compare the confidence interval obtained with and without the outliers to see what effect the outliers have. If the effect is substantial, use a different procedure or take another sample if possible. Okay. And if outliers are present but their removal is justified and result in a data set for which C interval procedure is appropriate. 
the procedure can be used. If the outliers are present, but their in removal is justified and results in a data set for which the C interval procedure is appropriate, and then we can use this procedure. Okay. All right. A fundamental principle of data analysis. Before performing a statistical inference procedure, examine the sample data. That is the fundamental principle of data analysis. If any of the conditions required for using the procedure appear to be violated, do not apply the procedure. Instead, use a different, more appropriate procedure if one exists. Okay? If any of the conditions required for using the procedure appear to be violated, do not apply the procedure. Instead, use a different, more appropriate procedure, if one exists. All right, now let's look at an example. This table shows the ages of 50, yeah, 50. Yes, 50 randomly selected people in the uh, civilian labor force. Okay, according to the first step of the one mean C interval procedure, we can obtain C score of alpha 2 for 95% confidence interval as alpha is 0 0.05. The C value of 0 0.025, that is alpha 2, that is 1.96 okay the second step is to calculate the bounds of the confidence interval we know that sigma equals 12.1 and n equals to 50 in this example also we can calculate x bar by dividing the sum of the sample data by sample size so x by equals to 36.4 okay, as we did in our previous section consequently 95 percent confidence interval for mu is from 33 to uh, 39.8 okay from this interval we can be 95 percent Confident that the mean age of all people in the civilian labor force is within 33 years and 39.8 years. From this interval, we can be 95% confident that the mean age of all people in a civilian labor force is within 33 years and 39.8 years. That's the end of this section and see you guys in the next section. Thank you.